it, it, it's carbon time again, it's sculpting time again, there's cheese grater, there's shovels, there's hand picks, there's all sorts of hand <laughs> tooling going on with the snow. What's happening today in Breckenridge? In Breckenridge is the 30th anniversary of the International Snow Sculpture Championships. 16 teams from around the globe come to Breckenridge to sculpt amazing works of art outdoors. What's been happening this week? So this week we've all been working super hard to take a 25 ton block of snow down to an amazing work of art. <laughs> this is our drug, is uh, snow sculpting, and it is addictive. All right, snow sculpting. Snow sculpting, we're gonna take a walk through the sculptures. Ever since I was a little kid, I came to this event and just, you know, it, it was so inspiring to see. It was really like seeing magic happen. Why, why snow sculpting? What's the draw to snow for you? What, what, what's the appeal? Well, for me, it's the process. It's, it's, it's an ephemeral uh, art. I mean, it, it melts as soon as you take your chisel off of it, the uh, sculpture is done. It could collapse at any second. The process of actually building it is kind of a, uh, a soul search, really. Um, as you go and you learn a lot about yourself and about your teammates and, and develop these great friendships and, and it's really amazing. The entire event is 400 tons of snow. This is not like snow that just falls nice and soft. This is really hard. I mean, it's packed like a sugar cube. We're going to walk this way. Yeah, okay, so what's going on? What's going on? We have the deadliest cat. So this project is called Greed. This is a homage to the uh, the clean water movement. We have a woman sculptor who's wailing down on that chisel with her hammer. She's carving herself out of the block. She's truly a self-made woman here. You said 65 hours of doing this. 65 hours. 65 hours over five days. So some teams decide to sculpt during the day, some decide to sculpt at night. You're used to, people in general are used to maybe staying up 14, 16 hours in a day and we're doing like crazy 14, 16 hour days of just sculpting. How exhausted are you at the end of the day after doing this? Well, we get to sleep usually for about four hours and then we're out here again. So, uh, I don't know, ask me in a week when I wake up. Now you can see there again, no power tools. All hand tools, that's right. We don't get to use any sort of mechanized equipment at all. Then we use sandpaper and spears and swords, pirate swords, ice augers, pretty much anything that's sharp and pointy that can hurt you is what we use on snow. I'm just doing the trim for the bowl now to give it that illusion that it's an actual bowl. We have 12 different countries featured in Breckenridge right now. You'll hear so many different kinds of languages that are being spoken, but the friendships that are formed in Breckenridge over 30 years, it, it's pretty incredible. It's such a, a huge worldly experience. I mean, how often do you get to <laughs> sculpt next to India? It's pretty great. It's such a, a sense of camaraderie that you get to share with everyone going through the same grueling task, this this really expressive moment, and it's just, it's unparalleled, really. You'll meet people from all over, and then it becomes like a super big family in the end. It's really cool. I mean, being amongst this much talent in one place is second to none. What's the best part? What's the best part about this stuff? Uh, standing back, once they say tools down, and knowing that you put your all into it, every single ounce of energy you had, every bit of love you had for art, and you got everything done that you possibly could get done in the amount of time. But we all know in the end, it's, it's in English, I don't know how you say it, it's that FMR, it'll melt anyway no matter what. So it's just the glory of having a nice picture and able to share with the communities that you're doing your sculptures in the end, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's honestly one of the beautiful parts of this art form. It's very ephemeral in its nature. You know, you, you slave away on this block for hours and hours on end, and you get to see people just react to it in such a positive way, but you're right, it, it, it is a very fleeting art form. It's not here forever. You can't see it forever like you can a bronze sculpture. So it really is something that's, that's really special. And um, I think that's why people really connect with it and feel that it's so magical. Why is this still a thing after 30 years? You know, it's the iconic winter event of Breckenridge. People travel all over the globe, just like these teams, to come see these sculptures. All you have to do is bundle up, 
put on a bunch of hand warmers inside your mittens and maybe an octopus helmet and you will have fun. I guarantee it. <laughs>